so yeah, it was worth getting ahead. Yeah. Uh, of this of this record by Modest Mouse, it's called the Golden Casket. Sure. Is. Um, I believe it's <laughs> I believe it's their seventh record. No uh, way. They have and, to have more than that. Well, they have a lot of EPs, okay. but in terms of full length albums, well, let's see. You have there's a long drive, uh-huh. the, the Lonesome Crowded West, Moon in Antarctica, Good News, When the Ship Sank. The one that came after that, that I can't remember the title of, 2015. <laughs> yeah, the Golden Casket. That's Stranger seven. to Ourselves. Strangers to Ourselves. Strangers to Ourselves. Um, I mean, really, like in the last, I mean, since G- Good News for People Who Like Bad News, which came out in 2004, and that was like their big mainstream yes. breakthrough, has it had flowed on on it. I think that record sold about 2 million copies, which was, I mean, that had to be the tail end of the period where a record. Could sell two million <laughs> by a rock records, band. Yeah, could sell two million records. Um, so you know they have some serious commercial clout. But yeah, ever since then, the seventeen years since then, they put out three records. Okay. Um, huh. And this the Golden Caskets, their first record in in six years. And um, I did an interview with Isaac Brock uh, that ran this week, mm-hmm. where we talked about each Modest Mouse record, including the new one. It got a little bit of traction online because. Isaac was talking about the new record, <laughs> which has a technology angle to it. And Isaac has some, uh, he's, he's kind of a conspiracy theorist, I guess. Uh, uh, I know there, there was a guy who is an expert on QAnon who read the interview and he was tweeting out excerpts from it and you know, talking about how, because you know, Isaac was talking about things like gang stalking and like, uh, and like other things that are, I guess, and, and there's this, uh, secret document that was supposedly leaked from uh the government call what's it called it's like silent weapons and quiet wars this is like the least surprising thing to me imaginable <laughs> like it's like isaac like I, i'm almost shocked that he isn't going deeper into like conspiracy theory and such well he might have i mean in our interview which by the way i just want to say that in our interview i thought he was really funny oh. and in good spirits oh, like sure. he wasn't he, someone asked me this, like how he was, like because I guess some people thought he came off as angry or or ranting in my interview, and it's like no, he just says the f word a lot, you know. Like okay. I thought he was like, it was fun to talk to him. He's a very interesting character. He's like one of the great characters of modern indie rock, I think for sure. Um, so, but yeah, he's got a lot of quirky ideas, and it and it feeds into the record. Um, I don't know. I feel like we're on the same page with this record. How how fucking crazy is it that like Modest Mouse is like a radio rock institution now? Like a new Modest Mouse song will be put on like 91X or whatever your local Clear Channel rock station will be because it's the new Modest Mouse song. And you'll hear it and it sounds not altogether different than like Imagine – not Imagine. It sounds more like Foster the People or Cold War Kids but like Modest Mouse flavored – I would. I think that's a good. I think that's how I would describe the new album. <laughs> well, like you know, and and you know, mentioning those two records in tandem, the the Shins record and the Modest Mouse record, the, those two that came out in 07, It seemed like that was the year that both bands put out their radio rock record. I mean, I, you know, obviously Modest Mouse put out Good News, and that had Flo Don on it, but I don't think that they necessarily conceived that thinking nah. that it was going to be a huge. Uh, you know, multi platinum hit. Whereas the that record, the you know, we were dead before dead. the ship even sank, definitely was conceived yeah. in that way. It is interesting too because I do hear from people for both bands that feel like those are their best records, and it, and and that seems generational to me. Like there's a certain <laughs> age group that feels like, oh no, yeah, like that most most record. You know, we were dead before the ship even sank. That's their best. Whereas someone like us, I feel like would be like no. Lonesome Crowded West is obviously their best work, you know, but that's like 10 years before yeah. this Radio Rock Prime. So it almost is like they have two different careers. Yeah. In a way. Well, which one is, which one's the best to you? Well, obviously Lonesome Crowded West for oh. me. I think that, I mean, maybe Moon, Moon and Antarctica would be number two. That's, that's my um, number one. Like, I, I think that like Lonesome Crowded West is the most distinct. Like that's, that is the one that you hear just echoes of it throughout indie rock and you know modest mouse like has really been adopted by a lot of emo bands but you know moon and antarctica like that's the one if you want to talk about like when when, when we were talking about bony bear last week like i would think that would that album would do for people what the moon and antarctica did for me that came out when i was like second or third year in college and just like 
you know, get it like getting high and just having like my mind blown by the production and like thinking like this guy's got it all figured out. Like lo and behold, I had no idea he like was in the hospital because he's got it at because he got his ass kicked at a bar, you know. Yeah, well, and he talked about that in my interview, and this is like a well-known story about how you know they were recording that album in Chicago, and he got jumped by some neighborhood kids who broke his jaw, and his jaw was wired shut for several weeks, and he was basically in the studio just doing overdubs because there was nothing else for him to do, and that's why that record is so layered. Um, yeah, I mean, there is, I think, there's... To me, in my mind, there's there's a clear difference between like those first three albums of Modest Mouse and the records that they did afterward. And it seems, in my mind, the the main difference is that on those first three records, they were a trio. And like by Moon and Antarctica, they were already bringing in ancillary members. That's obviously a much more layered record. But you know, like shout out to Jeremiah Green. Oh yeah, who I think is like one of the greatest indie rock drummers of the last twenty five years. When I think about like my favorite Modest Mouse, I think about like the last five minutes of Trucker's Atlas, like when they're they're just jamming on this like minimal groove, and it's such a distinctive sound. And the chemistry that they had as a band, I think, is so unique and integral to those records. Like the the songwriting is great, but I think the sound of it is just as important. And if there's something lacking for me in these latter day Modest Mouse records, um, but you know, there's some good songs on the new record. That song uh, "We Are Between" that's a decent song. Yeah, I mean, it's a solid, like melodic radio rock song. Yeah. Um, and I think lyrically, there's some interesting things on there that connect with uh, the older material. Mm. Uh, you know, if there's a through line in in, in Modest Mouse's career, it's that Isaac Brock has always been skeptical of <laughs> technology and progress and, uh, you know, how that affects the environment and, and, and just, I guess, humanity in general. I mean, that was a big theme of the Lonesome Crowded West. Yeah. You can hear that on the moon in Antarctica. And that connects to the Golden Casket, again, in ways that are kind of quirky, mm. if I could put it that sure. way. 